Good morning. Uh, nice crowd. I told them earlier I expect you all back next Sunday. Yeah. Uh, we're here today for a couple different things, but the main thing that I want you to remember today, this is called Seth Buckhannon. Most all of you are part of this in some manner or capacity of the intertwines of the polling family, okay? Now we've got a lot of branches out of it, but some of you have come a long distance. Uh, I would say this, Sheldon Murphy, stand up. Folks, this is what prayer does. Here's a boy that about this time last year couldn't get one foot in front of another. A rare disorder stric had stricken him. Sheldon, I'm glad you're here, buddy. That's what prayer is all about. Okay? Now, the second thing this morning I've shared with a lot of you, my brother J.D. had hip surgery about uh, two and a half weeks ago. He had a bad spell yesterday. His blood pressure bottomed out. Uh, they got him to the hospital. Uh, Kendra and Robert got him to the ER at Stonewall. Uh, it turned out that uh, they ran some tests and realized that he was septic. They took him by ambulance last evening to Mon General. Robert <coughs> texted me early this morning and said, Uncle Holt, at about 2 o'clock, he had a fever of 104. It spiked. The CT scan had showed that the pocket was about 4 inches outside the hip at burst. It's oozing now out of the incision, and he should be in. Um, he just texted and said he's out, but they're taking him to ICU. Okay. What does he should have been through surgery. Kendra says he is now out, and he's in ICU. And I will apologize to each one of you. I will try to say hello and goodbye to you as quick as I can, but I've got to be to Morgantown with JD. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, with heavy hearts, we're here today. But we're also here with joyous hearts because we know Seth is walking them streets of God. Okay? So with that being said, my scripture this morning. I shared a little bit of this with you. Most of us know this. We were taught this as young children. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But then a lot of us forget about the next verse. The next verse says this, For God sent not his Son into this world to condemn the world, but he sent him to the world through him that we might be saved. Okay? Now I want you to think about that this morning as I talk to you about Seth Buckin. But at this time, I'm going to introduce one of mine and Mary Alice's Friends, good friend has taken the opportunity. Erica had wanted a song, and I knew when Myrl contacted us the other night that it was heavy on her heart that she wanted her backup band to be here with her. So at this time, Myrl McKissick Gibson and her band will now sing you a song.
See, that was worth the wait, folks. That's a whole lot better than Mary Alice and Steve Campbell. <laughs> Steve? That's a standing joke here, folks. But, uh, you know, I'm also the guy that had the whistle for us one Sunday morning. Let's bow our heads, if we would, please. Lord, as we come to you this morning, again, Lord. I've asked you a lot of things. I ask you this morning, Lord, give me strength. Lord, help my voice stay strong. Lord, most of all, let me share the words you've given me to share. Lord, again, we uplift you. We want to give you the praise and the glory as we just did in this song. Lord, again, I thank you for everything. Amen. Today I'm going to speak to you about Erica's husband, about Liam and Baylor's dad, about Tim and Lori's son-in-law, about Grandpa Harvey and Grandma Shirley's grandson, Brittany's brother, a brother-in-law, Calvin and Etta, and Gunnar and Olivia's uncle, Mary Alice and my son, Seth. He's a nephew, he's a cousin, he's a best friend, and he was an advocate fighter for ALS. Normally I don't read much of a sermon, I have notes, but today I can get a little confused as I already have in my Sunday school lesson. But today, Buckhannon, West Virginia. Nothing special. Hmm. But I want to tell you something. It's just a small town in the United States. But many of us have been blessed to grow up here. Some of you moved here. Some of you raised a family here. And I've had a pleasure with my old buddy, Mr. Heyman, to work in about every small town in West Virginia. We've covered about all 55 courthouses. We've been in Ohio. We've been in New York. We've been in Pennsylvania. We've been in Virginia. We've been in Kentucky. But I'll be very honest with you, Buckhannon's always outshined them all for me. Mary Alice and I have worked and been supporters of all types of organizations within this community, as many of you have the same. Fundraising. Yeah, fundraising. At one point when Mary Alice or I would walk up and down the street, people would dive in the buildings <laughs> to get away from it. Yeah. 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 But the point is, they were very understandable. When Seth got diagnosed, folks, of course, it knocked the socks out of us. It just beat us to plumb death. But immediately, people started coming to me and Mary Alice and saying, how can we help you? Well, how do you answer that, folks? It's just like the, everything that we've been through. She and I have had lots of conversations, but we never did worry about the help because it was being done by each one of you behind the scenes, whatever it may have been. But what happened is when people get diagnosed with ALS, it becomes a burdensome money-making issue. And folks, that's what's wrong in our world today in the United States. That we, I have no problem about giving. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going there with this. What I'm trying to tell you is Buckhannon is a giving little community. ALS is known as the bankruptcy disease. It'll just suck you dry. Erica and Morales and I have had some time to reflect through the times of all this. But I look at the very first baked steak dinner at Chapel Hill. That thing raised over $35,000. Now folks, that's little town Buckhand. Then again, some more people stepped up. The next one's at the Moose and the Golly River Boys. Them Seth's old football buddies, Dee Post. She here? No, she's sick. She's sick. Well anyway, Dee was integral with that along with Seth's old teammates, okay? We've had sandwich sales, Jenny and 
Donna and all you other folks that helped organize and do those things. Unbelievable fundraising to sell on sandwiches and a little old buck in. Unbelievable volunteers, but from people from other places, they just don't get it. Buck Ann in your town. Erica and Seth had some help by two women that I would bring to attention to you this morning, a woman by the name of Carol Adkins and another woman named Carol McGraw. They took Erica and Seth under their wings and literally did so much that we can probably never ever repay them. But that's the difference in Morgantown. Erica didn't get a lot of other help from up there, okay? It's just different, folks. You're blessed to live in Buchanan. People just kept constantly walking up to me in their house. I don't know how many times I've got up in a restaurant, somebody come up and hug me and stick a $50 bill in my shirt pocket or a $100 bill in my hand. Here, that's for Seth and Erica. <coughs> Thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars. This little church, you can look, we're not great big. Thousands of dollars they've given to Seth and Erica. Folks, that's Christianity, okay? Erica has been so amazed. I know she's been taken back, overwhelmed by the outpouring. I know Mary Alice and I have through all this. But on the other hand, God has been good through so many folks that he's helped so many people before. Talking to a lady the other day, in 26 years, the town of Buckhannon has raised between two and three million dollars for the Cancer Society. That's a lot of money, folks, for a little old town. On the other hand, God's took a lot of other people through this same tragedy that Mary Alice and I and Erica, the little boys, We've all witnessed this, been a part of it. But my good friend sitting right back there, Catherine Friend, and I told her I was going to use this. Catherine Friend always says this, if God brings you to it, God will bring you through it. Now, I've heard someone recently say this, God on the mountain. Now, think about this, folks. God on the mountain is the same God in the valley. Did you ever think about that? You got highs and lows. There's a song I used a while back that says, Be a little Jesus every day. Now think about that. What's he telling you? You can help somebody every day. I shared a lot. Handshake, pat on the back, smile, telephone call, card. Be a little Jesus every day. Build on that. God is good, right? Yeah, but really, God is great. Yeah, yeah. Seth Poland. Henri. Yeah. We always heard that Seth was good, but. Now, remember me telling you all in Sunday school last week, and David Tenney said, when you see a, serp, a, a part of a, of a scripture start out with but, something big's about to happen, folks. Okay? But. Seth Poling was a good boy, but. I bet you mean Morales heard that a thousand times. We're seeing it a little bit in Liam and Baylor. I remember in grade school, Mr. Ewing, choir teacher, Seth, Mr. Ewing goes to the door. All the kids snicker. Does it about two or three times. Finally, Mr. Ewing figured out that Mr. Poling was up to no good. He got put in what they call the alligator pit. Okay? Yeah. We can skip forward a little bit because, I mean, we'd have tons of stories, but Seth is a good boy, but Aunt Grace, I wish she was here. Aunt Grace had Seth for English and, and yearbook at the same time. I told Mary Alice early on, this is not going to be good. <laughs> One of them was going to crumble. <laughs> I 
I blame my money on Seth. Yeah. I go on and there's other things that I marvel at, but I know Grace Ann would have to be the first to tell you. Seth's mind got bad, folks, at the end. Erica knows that. He was hateful to Erica and Mary Alice, but and five minutes later, he was good. Forgive and forget. Front level dementia, okay? That's what I read through the lines. But anyway, his ability to write, that's not the same cat bird to come home from school, okay? Jackie McDaniel. There was the other teacher that we had our doubts about. Seth Poling, the only guy I ever know to go to school, come home with a sunburn. Now, how do you get sunburn at school? Well, Jackie McDaniels put him outside the classroom window, and he stood out there one whole hour or however long and got sunburned. Okay? There you go. Then you wonder about this one. He comes home one day, we're eating dinner. And uh, he's going, Mary, I said, what's the matter, Seth? I need to quit choir. You need to quit choir? It's very stressful, Dad. Very stressful. You know they make you sing solos? Yeah. Now, Seth's friends, there are several of them here this morning. I can single out a few, but remember, you're all a part of this. We can start with countless Robert and Daniel and Seth's stories. <laughs> Tim and Pam lived this, probably more so on their end than we did on our end. We had the BB episode. Robert and Seth decided to shoot the Miller boys with the BB gun across the road. They was always fighting. Well, accidentally, somehow, the Miller's windows got shot with the BB gun. <laughs> Seth came home vividly with the idea that Uncle J.D. took the BB gun and snapped it over his knee and said, it's a good time for you to go home. <laughs> then we got Seth and Robert at deer camp. I never really ever, Daniel might share this some point, knows more about this than maybe the rest of us. Robert shoots a hole through Seth's brand new pickup truck. <laughs> Hood. Okay. Then Daniel and Seth catapult through the windshield in our side to side. Not sure what that was all about either, but we darn near killed Daniel and it scared to death out of Tim and Pam and Mary Alice and I. We got Boone and Pat and Neil, college stories. We got Poots, love that boy to death. Poots and Seth at WVU games. Then we got Ben McGill. Folks can't tell you how much Ben McGill meant to me and Mary Alice and Erica. That boy worked for UPS. He planned his lunch break every day to stop at the house and visit with Seth. He's found him on the floor and various and other sundry things. Ben was like a patriot on that. He just kept coming. But we go on and we talk about Pat and Willa. That's some of Seth's other friends. They've kind of taken the boys kind of under the wing to help Erica a little bit with shovel, pulling them around. And then we got Matt and Nicole. And they got all kind of camp stories, but we won't talk about them either. <laughs> and then I think about Tim and Pam Woody, Seth's other mom and dad. Can't ever thank you two enough. You know that. Seth called Pam his handicapped buddy. Now, you know. There you go. Yeah. The Woody family. They let my dad start hunting with them. And they, in turn, have allowed me and JD and Robert and Gunner and hopefully the little boys maybe down the road be a part of their family. It's very unusual, folks, but that's Christianity at the heartbeat, folks. That's what it's all about. It says that a person's only going to have a few friends. Jesus' commandment says to love one another as I have loved you. There's no greater love than to lay one down for one's friend. Now, folks, Seth's done that for you. I want you to listen to this. From this point on, this is kind of serious. You need to be prepared. Okay? 
Mary Alice and I have reflected on the love between Erica and Seth. Sweetie, I can't tell you enough here. We went to Cleveland Clinic where this finally kind of stated that you have ALS. That trip home was absolutely gut-wrenching. Finally, we were going south and we had to hit a rest stop. Erica was overcome by emotion. When she got out of the vehicle, I told Mary Alice, I said, this thing's about to come to an end, okay? This is about to come to an end. God has given Erica Helmet holding an extra dose, but she loved him all the way. I know someday that she's going to have a new life with them boys. Time's going to heal her broken heart. She deserves more than that. I have a bit more to go through with this. To muddy things up a little bit worse, the book of Joe changed to the book of Holton, Mary Alice, and Erica. Brittany gets diagnosed with cancer. Battling her own problems, staying positive, defiantly, just like her mom. Folks, I got a dandy too. She's even more like her brother, Seth. Seth stated early on that ALS wouldn't define him. Folks, it didn't. You all witnessed that. Jesus taught tenacity. In the Apostle Paul's book of Corinthians, chapter 3, verses 23, he said, He told us if we do something, do it with all our heart. All your effort. Then remember in Genesis chapter 6, God's become so upset with the world. It was so evil that God's decided he's going to destroy the world. He's going to end mankind. But he found grace, it says, in Noah's heart and eyes. Noah loved the Lord. So as Noah built the ark, it took him 400 years, he preached to the people. Didn't dent a soul. People were constantly asking, how are you doing? Well, not really good, but some days are better, but it's getting better every day. No, we just studied a few Sundays back, and I shared upon this. Your sorrows, you can get muck down in the mire, but you got to build on them. Build on them sorrows. I wish Uncle Johnny was here this morning. Uncle Johnny struggles with this. Mindy knows that. You get down and woe is me. But folks, Seth didn't want you to wallow in the mud. He doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to get up and clean the muck off and get in the fight. Matthew Woody sent me a text. He said, Seth is gone but not forgotten. Right? James chapter 4 verse 14 says this. We're just a vapor, then we're gone. That's plain and simple, folks. My good Christian brother, Jim Waterman over here, he told me, he said, God's tempering you for great things. Seems a bit unusual about the tactics, doesn't it? It does to me. But I know he's right. Folks, God put me up here for a reason. Amen. I think back about my father. I'll never feel a half of his shoe. But I know he's looking down on me this morning saying, you got this. Seth's preparation. Several of you had to go and say goodbye. It was awful. Tough stuff, folks. Lots of mom and dads never get that chance. I told you that this morning. We had Seth for 36 years. We were able to accomplish a lot. He was able to touch a lot of lives. He wrote letters, all kind of types. Erica knows this. Things about graduation for the little boys. Maybe about a marriage. Things to Erica. He gave money to Mary Alice to buy things for. Her. Anniversaries. Their anniversaries next weekend. But the greatest thing that Seth ever did 
And I know Pastor Junius Lewis was a part of this, and he's a great man. I wish he was here today. He helped me and, and Mary, Erica, and Seth. He's about six foot eleven, and I remember little old Gunner and I. Gunner said that man is a giant, and he is, but he's a great heart. But the greatest thing that Seth ever did was accept Jesus Christ as his Savior. And that's the only way you can do, folks. That's the only way he could do what he did. He told me early on, he said, Dad, I can handle this. Most people can't. Well, he handled it way better than I could. I still get a little emotional at times. But as I spoke my final words to Seth, as our eyes come together, I'd send him a little notice a little bit earlier. He and I kind of had a bit of a falling out, but we got it fixed, folks. Jesus Christ and God got that fixed for me. Very regretfully, I ever said the things that I did, but I was able to amend them. And as our eyes touched, I reflected to Seth. There's a song called Just Breathe. If you've never heard it, Google it and listen to it. Because, the folks, what it says is this. The last breath that he ever breathed here was his first breath that he breathed in heaven. Okay? I ask you once more, are you prepared? The poet Robert Frost wrote something. It's about a road not taken. I'm sure you had to study it. If you had Mrs. Fest, I guarantee you you had it. Yeah. But it's not necessarily about a road. It's about life's decisions. I look back at mine and Mary Alice's other daughter, Erica. She made an unbelievable decision whether or not to stay put. Most girls that age would have turned and run for the hills. Mary Alice and I would have never, ever thought anything less of her than that. The decision she made. Folks, it's the same thing in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It says this. All things work together for the good that love God. They are called to his purpose. A lot of ugly we went through. But there's a lot of good still to come. Yes, we see them boys that are ornery. I'm not so sure this one right here may not be the worst. <laughs> but anyway, John 14, verses 2 and 3, Jesus says, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place, I will come again to receive you. That where I am, you may be also. If you think about that, the minute Seth finally was able to pass away, we laughed about it, 18 hours. It'll just be any minute now. I mean, Erica and me and Morales almost got slap happy. You know, we were just, come in, it'll just be another minute or two, another minute or two. Poor old guy couldn't even catch a break leaving this world, you know. But anyway, with that being said, the minute that he closed him eyes, Jesus grabbed that hand, folks, and he's got him up there walking with him, okay? It's prepared. In the book 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says, As it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard. The things which God had prepared for them that love him. We can't describe it. There's books that's written that says, oh, I saw God and I witnessed this. Okay, that's fine. It's still not the same, I promise you. It's not the same. We cannot comprehend it. I close the day with a couple last-minute stories. As we said goodbye, Many of you heard that Liam said he was going to lay on his dad's chest and go to heaven with him. I can't even say anything about that. They will continuously gut us. They are very wise, way beyond four and five. Baylor said that he prayed his dad to go fast. Well, I guess he did in God's eyes. But 18 hours seemed to be a long time to me and my house in Erica. But anyway, Erica said Seth wanted it to rain and wash it all away. Sitting on the porch with Baylor, 
or Baylor, Briar. Yeah. And all once it started raining, never give it any thought. She'd never said that to me. I go back in and it's about, it's happened, okay? She also says the butterfly. What a beautiful picture right there, okay? Every time they see it, there's old adage that says the butterfly is the, the, the person saying goodbye. It, they're back to remind you, okay? I'll finish with this. Lauren Lamb, one of Seth's good friends, is in a coffee shop Saturday morning. She just got word, I'm sure, from Kim St. Clair that Seth had passed, and she's standing there crying. And she goes and sits down at a table. And the girls beside her are chit-chatting. And the person bringing the food, drinks, whatever, comes to the table and yells, Seth, Seth. They're looking around. Finally, the girls realize it's their food. Person gives them the receipt. Warren, like most of us, is inquisitive and is talking to the girls and they shares the story that her friend, Seth, had passed away. They hand her the receipt and the name on the top of it was Seth. I've seen it with my own eyes. She, the rest of you there too. God has a remarkable way, folks, of still keeping us under control. He has a remarkable way of communicating with us. Them little boys are always going to be a part of Seth. Okay? But so is an over here on the other side. Okay? And each one of you have your own stories to share. As they saw the receipt that said Seth, folks, it's very, very hard to understand how much alive that Jesus Christ is out here in our world today. Are you prepared? I think that Seth would ask each one of you to ponder that in your life. Are you prepared? He's walked that walk. He was a witness to it. I try to emphasize this every Sunday when I'm up here, whether teaching or preaching. But, you know, now's the time to open up your heart, okay? I mean, if you don't want to come to this altar, close your eyes. Or if you want to do it when you get home, or you want to do it in your car, anytime you ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, he'll do it. It's like our lesson this morning about the prodigal son. He's just sitting there with bated breath, saying, okay, old buddy, your journey's over. So as we close, I hope you got something out of this. I hope it reminds you about Seth. A lot of heartfelt moments for me. A lot of emotions to keep under control. I remember my last time I heard my father <coughs> teach a Sunday school lesson. Dad had a constant cough, and he prayed that morning. He said, God, let my voice stay strong. He's done that here for me this morning. He'll do that for each one of you. Mine's minute, okay? Now, before we close, I want you to do this. I know we're in a kind of a mumbo-jumbo, all right? If you could exit, preferably those of you that can get around well enough, go out the front steps go down around and go in the basement. If you'll do that, there is gobs of food. We're, we're well prepared for you, okay? Go sit down. Once y'all get seated, they'll bust you up, okay? Not, we'll tell you which side of the room we're gonna start on because I don't know, okay? So typically you're in good shape because I won't be sitting at your table, okay? But anyway, I would ask once more if all your hearts and minds are clear, uh, we have a closing song this morning. It's in your insert. This is Baylor's favorite song. One verse. One verse. First verse. Jesus loves me. Okay?
if you bow your heads. This will also be the blessing on the food. That way you don't have to go through that again. Okay? Lord, as we come to a close, Lord, I'm so thankful for the people that's come out. And some of these folks have traveled a long way. Thank you for the good friends and the cousins and everybody that's made this a whole part of this. Lord, we thank you that you were here to uplift Erica. Lord, that we're here to honor Seth. But most of all, Lord, we were here to honor you. Lord, again, for the food once more that these folks have helped prepare. I can't thank Dolores and Leona and everybody else that was an integral part to this. Thank you so much. Lord, again, for the many blessings of this day, again, we would ask that you give travel mercies to everybody that's going back home. Be with them and keep them safe. Lord, have been with the rest of us as we go back out into the world. Keep us on the watchful eye of you, Lord, that we got our eyes upon the prize, a home with you. Lord, once more, we thank you for everything, and it's in Jesus' name I pray this. Amen. Amen.